Now, um, Speaker John Boehner and Representative Paul Ryan were uh, one of the first today to address the House GOP as they met behind closed doors to talk about immigration reform and legislation to reform the immigration system we have in this country right now. And the Speaker argued that the party would be in a much weaker position if it failed to act on immigration reform this year. Now, all House Republicans were in that meeting today, including our next guest on our Newsmaker Line, Utah Congressman from the 2nd District, Congressman Chris Stewart. Congressman Stewart, how are you, and welcome back to the show. Hi, good evening. Uh, Thanks always for letting me come talk to you a little bit. What's the assessment, uh, your assessment today of the meeting? Well, it was interesting. I mean, it wasn't dramatic, and I think you've got a sense of that from the probably the original press reports. It's not like we went in there and, you know, reinvented the wheel or came out with something dramatic that no one had ever thought about. But it was a good, I think, appraisal of where we are right now, and where we are is that, you know, the Senate bill isn't isn't going to pass in the House, uh, but the House is going to take a slightly different approach and, and, you know, put out little pieces at a time rather than one big, huge, comprehensive bill. But uh, the second thing is that I think er- everyone wants to do something on immigration. I think everyone feels like this is something that needs to be addressed. Congressman Stewart, what do you think of a Boehner's comment where he said uh, it, we'd be in a much weaker position if we don't act this year? Uh, uh, do you agree or disagree? Well, I think he's probably right. And, uh, and the reason is is because it's good for America if we, if we don't continue to close our eyes and and pretend that having 11 million people living among us who are here illegally and living in the shadows and not participating in the, in the economy or in society the way they should or the way they'd like to, and at the same time pretending that uh, them being here and not paying some kind of penalty for being here illegally is fine. Uh, I, I mean, I think almost everyone agrees that's a bad thing, and it would be good for, uh, good for the state of Utah, frankly, and good for the rest of the country if we do something. So if that's the case, and I, you know, I absolutely agree with the speaker, and think he's, and think he's right. There appears to be a group within the House there who is very opposed to the pathway to citizenship. Where do you stand, and how do you see that shaking out right now? Well, it is one of the keys, but I don't think it's the only key. I mean, the first thing to to make this thing work is the is the security of the borders, and 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 the House has done some great legislation on that, and I know that because I sit on the on the. Homeland Security, where we were responsible for writing this legislation that secures the borders. Uh, you know, the Senate did what the Senate, frankly, does pretty well, and that's throw a bunch of money at a, <laughs> at a problem and, and hope something good comes out. Uh, they, what they're asking for $45 billion and, you know, 20,000 additional uh, Border Patrol agents, but they don't have any strategy, they don't have a plan, they don't have any accountability. And the, and the House plan that we put together on the border security uh, it does exactly that. You, you, you came up with a strategy. You, you, we force them to develop a plan. You have measure the progress, and then you come back and verify. So I think the primary thing to this is the border security. Secondary thing is a pathway to citizenship. And, uh, and if you're interested in, in moving legislation through the House and Senate, I think everyone's got to be willing to compromise. And for a lot of people in the House, the pathway to citizenship is a very, very difficult thing to do. But uh, offering some kind of legal status is absolutely doable. And, and I think it's kind of a middle ground where some people will say, uh, look, we're not going to round these folks up and send them home. We're not going to take 11 million people and deport them. What do we do with them? And for some, they're saying pathway to citizenship is just too difficult for me. We're, we're rewarding them for illegal behavior. But could we give them legal status? I think a lot of people would agree to that. But but should we hold off on the legal status until we know the border is Absolutely. secure? At least there's a trigger. I mean, the thing about the Senate bill, there doesn't appear to be any trigger. It's, yeah, Absolutely. come up with a plan, blah, 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 blah. We'll get to it sooner or later. But right now we want to legalize everybody. I think that's what most Americans are opposed to. Oh, I am banging my, my hands on the desk agreeing with you. You are absolutely right. And, again, that's one of the primary deficiencies in the Senate bill. You add, you, you allow provisional legal status. And let me ask you something, Rod. If you gave someone legal status and five years later we have not secured the border, are, do, you, do you in any realistic way think you're going to go rescind that legal no, status? Never, never happened. Never not. happened. Yeah, of it's not going to happen. Not. Absolutely not. And so that's one of the primary focuses, again, of this legislation we moved through Homeland Security, is you have these triggers along the way. And nothing is offered until we actually secure the border, and you have the security first, and then you offer the legal status. But if you offer legal status first, and the administration and the Democrats call it provisional, well, that's just BS. There's no such thing as provisional legal status. Once you grant that to them, it is permanent, it's forever, you'll never take it away. 
Is there, um, do you think there, I don't want to use the word comprehensive because, you know, it gets too large. And like you said, uh, people see comprehensive and they just throw money at it. But is there a well-defined plan that the House could come up with that they then could throw back in the Senate and say, here's what we think? You bet. And and the House is doing that. You know, we're, we're ready to pass the SAFE Act, which deals with some of these. The uh, uh, issues that deal with everything from the you know, the H-2A uh, ag workers, the H-2B seasonal workers, the H-1B, the high-tech workers. Uh, we're dealing with things that deal with children who are brought here at a very early age uh, or, or even as infants. Uh, you know, we're talking about E-Verify. All of those things are moving through the House even as we speak, and they're not going to be put in one comprehensive bill. Because if you want comprehensive, you know, think Obamacare. Yeah. That's a comprehensive oh, bill. Please no. <laughs> yeah. And I wish we wish you had time to go off on that tangent for a while, right, and yeah. look at some of the things with Obamacare. But, you know, comprehensive is, is a way to shove things through the legislative process that people hopeful, hopefully think you don't know what's in there. And uh, far better to break it into pieces and to let everyone know what it is, to have the, the sunlight shining on it, and to people say, okay, I get that, I can support that. Let's pass that bill, and let's send that to the Senate. Yeah, well, you make a lot of sense, and I know other members of the delegation are saying the uh, same thing from Utah and other members of the House. Congressman, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, well, once again, it's always a pleasure, and we'll come back any time we can. All right, that's uh, Utah 2nd District Congressman Chris Stewart on the Rod Arquette Show talking about the meeting in the House today where they had a pretty frank discussion about immigration reform.